Hi, this is Mark from Right Line Trading, and I really like to thank everybody um, for uh, giving me this hour this evening uh, to, t to talk to you about uh, the, our electronic entry system. And in order to do so, I'm really going to uh, uh, move through uh, a really broad range of topics, which I think are, of, are going to be of significant value to everybody. Um, whether or not they wind up coming aboard and leasing the product um, because I think it has tremendous ramifications uh, for the state of the, uh, of, uh, the day trading industry. And, and just a little bit about myself, I'm a graduate of the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm, I'm a former professor at Jefferson University uh, in Philadelphia. I've been involved in the financial markets for over 20 years. Now I began trading the futures and forex markets about 10 years ago and I've been involved in, in the in the optimization uh, of software systems for the last 10 years via mathematical modeling and everything we have is at rightline trading www.rightlinetrading.com now I'm not really particularly happy the way I wrote this slide but I just really wanted to talk about uh, the state of the day trading um, industry. Um, it's, I, th I think, unlike any other industry potentially in the world. Uh, is there any, if you ask yourself, is there any other business in which 95 out of 100 people who start the endeavor wind up essentially going bankrupt. I can't think of any. And it, it, it brings to mind a question, and that is, what is broken about day trading? Why should 95% of everybody who comes in to the day trading business wind up busting out? And I think the answer, I'm going to sh really show you the answer, but the, but the answer is that what vendors offer you is simply a single variation on a theme. They all have variations of the same techniques, and these techniques don't work. And the problem is when new traders come into the market, I mean, it's almost like the old definition of insanity. When you keep trying the same things that don't work and expect them to all of a sudden to start work to work, then, you know, it, it, in certain instances, I mean, there, there is an element of insanity there. I mean, when you cruise through the different websites that offer you these, this, these multitudes of, of, of different software options, 95 out of 100 are offering you software packages that simply are ineffective. What we need to define today is what is broken about all these systems. What single factor spans the entire day trading space to provide us with so many variations on the same theme? and leads to the demise out of, uh, to, uh, to 95 out of 100 traders. And the thing that really sort of surprises me is why don't many people take a step back and ask themselves, why, do, is, it so, why is this industry so semi-impossible to be successful in? And, I, I, and the only way I can the only way I can kind of make an analogy is if um, let, and let's say you went to a software vendor who's been around for years, and instead you go to a uh, to a builder, and uh, you 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 want to build an office building, and you talk to the man, and he says to you, "Well, out of the last 100 buildings I put up, 95 of them fell down." and uh, collapsed. Now, you're not going to use that builder 
something inherent in his system that he employs to create these structures ultimately lead to their collapse. That is exactly what's going on in the day trading industry today. 95% of all the software leads to 95% of traders going bankrupt. Now, to be a little bit more specific, these systems come with entries that are back tested only. They're not forward tested. And the entries have no mathematically quantified predictive value. And many systems are just plain broken. So before we define what works, I want to clearly define for you what doesn't work. And once you see what's going on, it's really going to open up your eyes. Now, there's only one man I know out there um, by the name of Dean Hadley, who is also trying to who's trying to bring order to the industry. He's trying to point out that so many of these systems don't work, um, are flawed um, structurally and mathematically. Um, other than that, there's nobody. When we there should be hundreds of us rising up. Um, to ask just what the heck is going on here. At the very least, 50% of us should be successful and 50% of us should be failures. If we're all smart, 95% of us should be successful and only 5% of us should wind up with a busted account. It is unconscionable and unacceptable to allow 95% of us to walk down the path of, of, of destitution and poverty to continually refund an account that is doomed to wind up being depleted and emptied. Now let's, like, let's look really quickly, and this is, in, this is in some of the naivete inherent in the industry. If you don't understand the way a the way an, a, uh, an indicator processes information, you will not know when to use it and when not to use it. Now, to, let's take a look at any oscillator. It can be the stochastic, it can be relative strength, it can be um, the CCI. In order for it to work, it has to have four numbers. If you look at the formula, it has to have a high, a low, an open, and a close. Without those four figures coming off of each formation, whether they be a candlestick, an open high-low close, a modified Renko that has a tail on it, an oscillator does not work. Yet multiple systems use oscillators. Now, this is an oscillator. And this is a regular chart. And this is an oscillator on a Renko brick bar, a Renko brick chart. All this is doing is tracing out the, the price pattern. There isn't enough data to drive this chart and produce any predictable line. It's a useless chart. But I've seen this offered in tandem in so many software packages that if you try to trade off the stochastic, you will, it absolutely has no predictive value. It looks great on a static chart on back testing, but on a live market, it is useless. The predictive value of this stochastic is zero. Yet we still trade it. And we have lots of people who buy systems that use Renko's and some form of stochastic. Now let's take a look at a regular stochastic on a chart that has uh, that has regular candlesticks. Now the market get, is overbought here, and is overbought here. 
yet the market keeps going up. Now, we can interpret this as meaning that when the market's overbought, the bulls are firmly in control, and every time a, a, a high pivot is broken, you continue to buy, continue to buy, continue to buy. The bulls are firmly in control when the market is overbought. But let's take a look at the stochastic again. Now we're looking at stochastic divergence. It, the webinar is being recorded, Pat. Now let's take a look at stochastic divergence. The market makes a higher high, and relative strength makes a lower high. What happens to divergence? It gets completely run over. So now if we take these two together, we look to sell in an overbought market, or we look to sell divergence what is the predictive value of an oscillator signal when it's driven by price from your trading chart now I, I would really like to, uh, so, some people to give me an answer do they feel that the predictive value of an oscillator is 50 percent is it right 50 percent of the time in other words what percentage of the time can you use it to predict future price movement? Can anybody tell me that? Come on, someone. Yes. You got it. Okay. First two. Water? Wouter? Noah? Let me tell you, when two people came up, three people came up with the right answer. Yep. The answer is it has zero predictive value. If it works sometimes and doesn't work another time, it has absolutely no predictive value in getting you into a trade. Hit and miss signals on a mathematical basis, have zero predictive value. What happens when the oscillator gives a signal is purely a random chance event. The, when, it, when the market uh, creates a, a uh, divergence, it's purely random chance whether the, whether the, whether the divergence signal is actually going to turn the market or the market's going to overrun the signal. When, when the market becomes overbought, it's purely a random chance event whether the market is then going to turn and eventually fall. So, and how many people use the oscillator to help them in fine-tuning the predictive value or fine-tuning their entries. A lot of people do. But what, they, what, they, what you understand now from this webinar is that an oscillator doesn't have any predictive value. So let, do we get rid of it? Well, not, we don't quite do that. And later on, we're going to show how we make, um, actually, for an oscillator, we're going to wind up getting rid of it. But we're going to show you how indicators can be made to have true predictive value. Correct, David. And I'm going to go through all the questions. Now, let's look at Fibonacci for a minute. Now, Fibonacci, and I don't want, want to run over time, but I, I mean, this is the one that really kills me a lot. Because Fibonacci was... I can't remember, I think he was born around the year 1200. And he developed, um, and, and he described uh, Fibonacci numbers, which led to him creating what, what's called um, uh, Fibonacci transformations. Now, Fibonacci transformations and Fibonacci numbers, you know, 
Fibonacci numbers describe the number of the array of of the way a pine cone looks and the, the number of edges on a snowflake. What it is is it's a mathematical curiosity. But does it describe the movement of anything in nature? Now the answer is zero. And what I mean by that is let's take a look at some some math that does. Uh, let's look at um, the theory of relativity e equals mc squared. Let's look at a Heisenberg's transformations that tell us the uncertainty inherent in determining the position of any two particles with reference to each other. Let's look at Planck's constant that describes the interaction of subatomic particles. Let's look at Newtonian mechanics. Uh, simple equations like force equals mass times acceleration. I, I, I mean, uh, an equation that Newton came up with simply by, by an apple falling off a tree and hitting him on the nose. These equations describe the interaction of bodies in space and the interaction of the physical universe. They have utility. In 300 years, Fibonacci transformations have been shown to describe nothing. They have been shown to have no utility whatsoever. Now, if the man who said to himself, God, I think I'm going to take Fibonacci transformations or Fibonacci extensions or retracements, stick them in the stock market, and they're going to describe the motion of price for a financial instrument, actually turned out to have made a discovery, that man would be canonized and he would have won a Nobel Prize in science. The fact of the matter is nobody has any clue who, to, who 250 years later, actually more, it was more than that, 12, 31, 16, 17, 18, 700 years later, decided that these, this esoteric piece of mathematics was going to adequately describe the movement of price on a chart. And what we did here is look as what was forward, we forward tested Fibonacci levels to see if you could create some kind of predictive assessment of each of these levels. And they're just like the oscillator. Sometimes they hold and sometimes they break. And when that occurs, the predictive value of Fibonacci levels are zero. I don't care if you use Fibonacci confluences. It doesn't make any difference. People have been trading Fibonacci for the past five million years, and no one has ever made a dime from them. All they're going to do is cost you money. I agree with you, Fitzroy. These guys that throw this Fibonacci at you, I am telling you, are walking you right off the side of a cliff. The amazing thing is the number of people like Lemmings who just keep diving off that fib cliff. I don't know anyone who can show me an account that makes money that simply trades Fibonacci extensions or Fibonacci retracements. And we have proved here in the office that mathematically they are absolutely useless. That's a fact. So we're going to take Fibonacci and we're going to put it where it belongs in the garbage. It's a really nice set of transformations. I looked at them carefully, and they don't mean a whole lot to me. I'm not a mathematician. But I can tell you, 800 years later, they do not describe price movement in the stock market or in the futures market or in the Forex market or in any market, not even in the grocery store in the food market. So what is the predictive value of any indicator 
when we're going to make this a little more global. I know that she does, Clark, but you know what? She doesn't. Um, she does not produce an, a, a really nice uh, set of results. I know her. I don't. And you know what it is? I don't want to talk bad about any single individual. I just want to give you my interpretation of the value of uh, of Fibonacci, and, I, and I'm really not here to diss anyone. So what is the predictive value of any indicator that, that assimilates data from your trading chart only? And the answer is, you got it, Noah, zilch, zero, not. What is the predictive value of any indicator that works sometimes, but not others? The predictive value is zero. And this is why 95% of day traders fail. They use the same broken theology. Say it ain't so. I'm telling you it is, Keith. It, it's the same broken theology, philosophy, methodology that has been used for the past 20 years to day trade. It's all it's all being recorded, John. And I'm going to get to the question. I don't want to interrupt myself, so I want to I want to get it through. The methodology that has been employed for the past 25 years and has cost day traders like you and me nothing but grief and tremendous financial loss. Trust me that the institutional guys are not sitting there with a 377 tick chart, watching an oscillator and a MACD and taking trades off of that. Um, so, so this is really why 90% of day traders fail. It's because you're all employing that same thesis that indicators that assimilate data from price on my trading chart are going to have future predictive value in price. We discard that. We don't believe that to be true. And we have really mathematically proven it to be true. So what do we do in order to overcome this? What, what we do uh, in right line, all our indicators assimilate data only from the two higher time frames that from your trading chart. If you're trading range, we go two numbers higher. And actually, we do use FIB numbers. And they work out really nice um, on range charts. Fibs work great for that, I'll tell you, um, but, the, but, but they, don't, they don't predict price movement. Now, this pink on this chart is not created by the fall of price. It predicts the fall of price because the pink is created by price heading down on the two higher time frames than the trading chart the 50 period moving average heading down on your two higher time frames and the 15 period moving average heading down on your two higher time frames. When that occurs, your trading chart develops this pink and this pink increases the predictive value of a short trade. Exactly, Eric. This pink increases the predictive value of any signal you get to the short side. This isn't an indicator where you take a long or a short. It's simply, in, it's simply a variable in a multivariable equation to try to determine the, the future direction of price. And it has tremendous predictive value. 
in de in de in determining that price is going to fall. Now let's take a look at another indicator that we use. This is a very, very unique indicator. This is called our quant analysis indicator. You're going to see, though, if you look, if you look at market structure, Eric, you don't have the reversal zones. You're going to see we eliminate them. We don't, we don't trade indicator, indicator signals. You have to see how the whole system is integrated. Now, what this does is we know that the that that money really that what what institutions do is they rotate money i mean we don't know exactly how much but it, you know what it, it, it's 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 tens of billions of dollars and they rotate it to different asset classes you know during periods when they feel that when you know, when, when risk is on they're in they're into stocks um when risk is off they're into bonds and they're into notes uh, we know that there's, that there's an inverse relationship between, between bonds and notes and stocks. There are also more subtle uh, relationships to the value of the dollar, to the value of precious metals. So what we did was we analyzed literally hundreds of markets to see which ones correlated had a correlation coefficient of 0.7 or greater with the market that we were trading. In other words, does the market go up 70% of the time with the instrument we're trading, or does it go down 70% of the time? Because the relationship can, be, can correlate directly or it can correlate inversely. As long as it moves in a direction or opposite direction 70% of the time. And what we created were quantitative analysis lines because we weighted each of these markets. So in these two lines are six markets and these six markets correlate with a direct or correlate inversely with the direction of price on the trading chart. So not only do we, do we look at multiple higher time frames, we look at multiple other markets. Now, you can see what happens when both quant lines turn, turns green. What that's telling you is that money is coming into bonds. All the markets that correlate directly with bonds are going up. All the markets that correlate inversely with bonds are going down, and the line, and you get green, green. And again, this is another independent variable that provides you with an entry to the long side that has a better chance of being successful. So what we're doing here is we're trying to optimize the, the positive predictive value of your trading entry. We haven't even talked yet about the actual trading entry. We're simply talking about the direction we want to trade. And we're not taking that off of our price on our trading chart. We're taking it either right now off of multiple higher time frames or we're taking it off of correlative markets. Now, the, I'll just tell you, the quant lines on, on the E-mini S&P are absolutely fabulous, and I'm going to show them to you. And they are part of our electronic trading system. Now, let's take a look at market profile. Now, market profile is a terrific indicator. The problem is, with it is, is that market profile is not market profile is not market profile. They all are different. And they're all different in very subtle ways. And what we did was we looked at, first of all, some of them create a, a value area high and a value area low that encompasses 67% of price, others 70% of price, others in between those two. Well, what is the best value to set between the um, VAH and VAL. 
Well, we determined it, and we're not going to tell you exactly what it is, but he, this is what it is on the chart. The point of control is simply the um, uh, volume at price that, that occurs most commonly. And what is the look pack period? Have you ever seen some people's um, uh, market profile? They've got these multiple uh, histograms, the one day, the five day, the one month, the six month. They all have pointed controls. They all have VAHs and VALs. Well, what we did was we did it. We did an estimate of how far to look back. It's a proprietary number of days, but what it does is it allows you got well. That's that 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 is one, Eric. I mean, and you can see, and I'm going to show you how reliable this is when it comes to support and resistance. Because we've optimized the look back time, optimized the distance between the value area high and value area low, and the most important thing about our market profile is it's dynamic. It changes intracandle. So the worst thing that can happen to you is you take a trade and the candle close pops the value area high right in front of your trade. It hits the value area high, bounces off of it, and hands you a three or $400 loss. Our market profile is dynamic. It's going to move intracandle. It won't allow that to happen to you. Now, I, didn't I honestly did not cherry pick this. I mean, you can see, but you can see what happens. One of the strongest things you can see is a break and retest of the value area low and the move up. It hits the value area high, retests it, and comes down. Now, you have no trade to the long side here because it hasn't come all the way down to the value area low. And here is it's just chop. Nothing to trade here. But here, you get a break and retest of the value area high and a big move to the upside. Our market profile, again, provides your trading entry with additional predictive power. Combine that with the assessment of direction on multiple higher time frames and the direction of multiple higher correlative markets. Four trades on the chart. Uh, here's one. Here's two. Here's three. And here's four to the upside. The market profile, Henry, is just this, the magenta line, I'm sorry, cyan, cyan, and the black line. You don't see my pointer? Leo, can they see my pointer? Okay, hold on a minute. Let, 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 let me get the pointer going. Hold on a second. And I'll show you this slide again. We'll get it. Okay, here we go. I was pointing at the wrong thing. I'm sorry. Here's, what's, here's what you're going to see. Here's the value area high. Here's the value area low. It's set a proprietary distance apart. Here is the point of control. That's the same for pretty much every market profile. Here's your first trade. You break the market. You break the value area low to the upside. Test it. Retest it. And you take a, whoops, I'm sorry, let me bring this slide back. You test it, retest it, and long you go. Point of control, test it, retest it, down you go. Then you have nothing here because you haven't hit the value area low. This is just choppy in between. You have nothing here. Here is a single test, riskier, but you can take a short off an area of strong resistance, and you have a short. Then you have the break, test, retest, and move to the upside. Now, these kind of signals, this is called a tweezers formation. It's a double test of an area of support or a double test of an area of resistance. This is a tweezers formation. This is a tweezers formation. And this is a tweezers formation. We we're, we're very ardent market structure 
traders and we look for co indicator confirmation but the kind of indicators we use do, cre do increase the predictive value of the trade. Now, we're, as I said, we, we inherently, we are ardent supporters of market structure. So let's just take a look at two examples of where market structure to come, in, come into play. I was almost going to delete the slide, but I, I like it. You have the 50 heading down. You have the 15 heading down. So you, you're in a confirmed downtrend. Now we're not looking at multiple time frames. What we're looking at right now is simply market structure. And what happens is the market falls and then moves into a period of sideways consolidation until it hits resistance. Now, when it hits resistance, is it likely to break to the upside out of resistance or more likely to break to the downside? I'm sorry, out of consolidation. When it hits resistance, is it more likely to break up or more likely to break down? Well, if you're not oversold, and, we've, and we have developed a different uh, um, assessment of developing an oversold, overbought signal, which I'm really not going to go into because I really don't want to go into all the nuances of the platform, really just into our trading philosophy. But when you go into a period of consolidation, once you come up against an area of support or resistance, you're almost always going to break out of consolidation in the direction of the trend. And that's what we look for carefully. We have a signal called our consolidation signal. Some of our best trades come out of consolidation with indicator confirmation. Here's another. I actually just showed this on the um, on the other slide. We have a move to the. We have a break of the modified 15. A pullback to test the 15, and then a move to the upside. Now you can see this is purely a structural trade. Background bias is blue. It tells us that our, our higher time frames are moving to the upside. We don't have the quant lines with us, which makes the trade, which drops the predictive value of the trade. But this is a perfect structural trade. Break, test, and up. These are the kind of things that we look for. I, I quickly got this into got got this into the slide slides. I could have picked a much better one where we had quant confirmation. That would have been a better slide. But I just want you to see that we look for trading. When we trade, we trade with market structure and the algorithm that we have that the electronic entry system uses to trade respects market structure. So the goal of right line trading is to combine market structure on a multi-time frame basis with indicator analysis on a multi-time frame basis into a platform that's been optimized mathematically to provide you with the algorithm to give you remarkably accurate trading entries. We reject the hypothesis of everyone else. We don't trade Fibonacci and we don't trade any indicators that assimilate data from our price from price on our trading chart. We look at our higher time frames and the indicators assimilate data from there. And we look at multi time frame market structure. Now, we don't trade potential tops or bottoms. The algorithm does not trade potential reversals. It does not counter trend trade. It does not trade potential breakouts. These are all very risky trades and I think totally unpredictable. If you could show me a trader that can predict a top or a bottom, you saw the way that oscillator got run over when it got overbought. You saw the way divergence got run over when it got overbought. You show me a trader that can call a top or call a bottom, and that guy's got divine intervention. You can't counter trend trade because the institutional guy set up the trend, and you can't fight them. you got to go with them. And that's why you can't trade potential re uh, reversals.
we'll show you, Ralph. Just relax. Everything, we're going to get everything in. So what we do is we take the most conservative trades, which are retracements in a multi-time frame confirmed trend with multi-time frame market structure in alignment. We don't look for a lot of trades. What we look for is a high percentage of winners. Now, I just want to tell you this week, I have five trades in the live trading room, and I have five winners. We're up just under $1,000 in two trading days, simply because I've only taken five trades, and I'm going to show you all of them. And then I'm going to show you the algorithmic trades, even though we haven't turned the system on yet. Now, here's a trade I took in the trading room. Now, this is not an algorithmic trade. It went for eight ticks on the ES. You can see the consolidation signal, which is the triangle. You can see the upper and lower consolidation channel. And you can see that the that price, market structure-wise, abutted. You'll see, Clark, what we're talking about here is the fact that it is simply the optimization of our entries. Now, this trade had some inherent risk. I had two of the quant lines in my favor. I quickly had three. But without background bias, we know that we don't have multi-time frame alignment in price. A multi-time alignment in direction. This creates a trade whose predictive value decreases. So when you take a discretionary trade, you understand that. But when you get familiarity with the system, you know that trading out of consolidation is one of the most powerful signals we have. And so I took it, and we went for two points. That's a discretionary trade that I took. Now, here are two more discretionary trades, and these were both semi-risky trades that I took. This was a break and retest to the point of control. I didn't have any quant lines, and the 15 was below the 50, but I really liked the break and test. Uh, the time zone is Eastern. I really liked the break and test of the um, point of control. And the trade went for a point. Then I had this. We had the break and the retracement into a falling 15 and a red 50. Again, only one of the three quant lines in my favor. These are E-mini trades. And this went for seven ticks. These are all part of those five winners. But what I'm, what I'm trying to show you is when I trade on a discretionary basis, I am accruing inherent risk. I'm not trading when all the quant lines align. And I am not trading when background bias tells me that all the higher time frames are in alignment. Now, that's a concern. And I always go back and critique my trades. But you, do, you develop your own um, unique system, develop your own sense of, um, of risk management. I felt these trades were worth it. This is exactly what it's. A, this is exactly what. Whoops! The algorithmic trading system does not do. Now here's another trade I took this this morning on crude. It went 18 ticks. It was a tet. It was a move up to the 50, and a failure, a retest of the 50. And you can see it created a falling channel. I was in at the close of this candle. And this was a, ner a nerve-wracking trade because this wick gave me it, it, you know, acid indigestion. I didn't use the quant line. I had no background bias. I simply used the falling channel and a break of the modified 15. And the trade went 18 ticks. But you can see that in my trades... I am taking risk. I am taking needless risk. And I wanted to point this out 
to show you that when, when humans trade, we always tend to not want to miss a good move. And we sometimes step out in front of a bus and get run over. Now, these were really good trades and they went anyway. But I am assuming an additional amount of risk. This is what the trading algorithm and algorithmic trading avoids. Now, here is an algorithmic trade. I took the three tick trade and was busy trying to fix something on the platform. Here is an algorithmic trade. The candle is outlined in red, which shows that order flow and momentum are aligned to the downside on multiple time frames. We've got background bias, dark pink, which tells us that the market is heading down on multiple higher time frames. We've got two of the three quant lines aligned. The middle quant line on the ES is the minor quant. The algorithm knows this. So we have the first and the third lines aligned. And the trade went 17 ticks. So it shows that when you step aside and let the riskier trades go, it's the trades that have everything going for them that not only have a higher degree of success, they also tend to run further. And here's another winner I took. Now, you have to move it over to the right edge, but this is really uh, a break and test of the point of control again. And this went for a point. So on a 17 tick algorithmic trade versus a three tick winner and a one point winner. Here's another algorithmic trade. You have a break, a, re a retracement, a move down, candles outlined in order flow and momentum, which is aligned to the downside on multiple higher time frames, direction, on multiple higher time frames is to the downside. Remember, we're not looking at any indicator analysis from our trading chart. And we've got all the quant lines red. I, I, I'll, go over the, I'll go over that, James. And down it goes for 19 ticks. And I'm telling you, I don't cherry pick these. When you get an algorithmic entry, you need all these parameters to align in order for the algorithmic system to trigger a trade automatically. If they're not there, you will not get it. Here's another algorithmic trade. All three quant lines are aligned to the upside. Green, green, green. This background bias is acceptable to the algorithmic system. You're in one, actually you're in at the close of the candle, it goes up 3.75 points on an algorithmic trade. Now, I'm not saying you're, gonna, you're, you're obviously going to get in at the initiation of the trade, that you're going to take this to the top. And I will go over the ATM. I'm just showing you the power of algorithmic trading when it ignores all the variables that sometimes cloud our heads when we trade on a discretionary basis. Here is another algorithmic trade, three and a half points on the ES. All these trades occurred in the last two days. If you look at the date, this is 1-5. That was today. Order flow and momentum, 15 is red, 50 is red. This is perfect background bias. Uh, candle is outlined, order flow and momentum are aligned to the downside. Uh, you've got two of the three quants. It quickly recruits three out of three. <coughs> and the trade just makes a huge move to the downside. Another perfect algorithmic trade. Now, in order to take algorithmic to take the algorithmic trades, We've developed our own trading entry system. It's called our Ninja Dome Trading Trade Execution Platform. If you lease or buy the system, we give this to you. And what you're going to see all of a sudden 
is the buy on an up close or sell on a down close, go red or go green automatically. And that means the algorithmic system has kicked in and is now looking to get you in on a move to the upside or a move to the downside. Now, in the trading room, well, I'm, I'm going to go over this in a second. So the electronic algorithmic trades will trigger automatically on your NDT platform, which will, be, which will be provided to all subscribers. You do nothing. You let the trade evolve based on the ATM strategy. Our recommended ATM is you trade four contracts. You take two off at three ticks, one off at four, and you take your fourth off at 11 ticks. That's our recommended ATM. And you just watch the trade. I'm still going to call the discretionary trades out in the room, as usual. But then you've got to press that button. I'm going to say buy at a down close, sell at an up close. And I'm going to give you the instructions. Because as, as, some people don't want to use this. They want to trade directly off the Ninja Dome. I don't. I can't imagine why, because they got to chase the entry. This automatically gives you the entry without having to chase it. But I'm still going to trade on a discretionary basis. Uh, we believe this is the first combination of, of electronic algorithmic trading and discretionary trading ever created. Now, in the course of the next 90 days, we're going to keep detailed records and see which trading methodology makes more money. So starting on Monday, I'm going to be fighting our own computer-generated um, trading algorithm. And we're going to see which system makes the most money per contract. Now, it doesn't make any difference. Let's say the algorithmic trading makes $4 per contract per trade. And I just, I don't know, pull that out of my hat. And I make two fifty dollars per contract per trade. It's simply two revenue streams. You wouldn't stop dis the discretionary trading. You would take them both because they're both providing you with money. It's simply that the algorithmic trading is a little more lucrative per contract but at the end of the day, you're still going to wind up with more money because both discretionary and algorithmic are providing you with, with added revenue at the end of the day. Now, I, we, I, if you don't know us at Right Line, I am telling you, we never hard sell anybody. But th there will truly be a cap on the number of subscribers. The reason is on the electronic algorithmic trades, we are going to be putting a lot of people in at the same tick level. And that has uh, inherent risk. If we, and, we're going to start to, and we're going to start taking a poll as we start accumulating users. And once we get to a certain number of contracts, if someone's trading 50 contracts, and we have two or three people trading 25 contracts, we have to protect the integrity of the entry. And we will lose that entry, or 50% of the people will lose it, because even though there's a lot of liquidity on the E-mini, e we're going to wind up getting stuffed up. Now, here is our ultimate goal. Our ultimate goal is to leverage the system to the max. And here's how you leverage it to the max. We're starting on the E-mini, but that's not where we're going to end. We will quickly be moving to crude. Then we're going to move to uh, the NASDAQ. Then we're going to move to the Dow. Then we're going to move to the Russell so that the electronic system, the algorithmic system, can watch seven or eight markets. It's going to watch markets I can't even see. I can only trade two markets at a time. The algorithmic system can trade eight or nine or even ten. And it's going to cherry pick the most beneficial trades, the trades where the independent variables all align to provide you with the greatest positive predictive value on a trading entry. And if that occurs on a Russell chart, we're, you're going to get a Russell entry. So that's our ultimate goal, is to 
have a whole menu of of um of um markets that the that the algorithmic system will use i'm i will still trade discretionarily the e mini and crude and, but that's where we're going and that's why we have to cap also the number of subscribers there's a lot more limited liquidity on those markets and everyone's going to get every trade automatically you just, all you're going to have to do is going to have the ndt up you don't even have to have the chart up all you need is this and it's going to get you into the trade and the trade's going to evolve via the atm you should have the chart up though but you don't necessarily even need it now just as a matter of our philosophy we never ask you to pay for boot camps all our seminars or lectures are free our new indicator packages are free our upgrades are free for life um, they're all you all yours as part of becoming a member of, of the right line trading family and we do have a, a special uh, now this the electronic entry system for one month is 399 our special now that in, that gets you in the room so you can take all the discretionary trades as well if you choose and it also gives you the NTD our, our NTT dome I, which I'm telling you is very advantageous in taking discretionary trades or even trades on your own although I wouldn't recommend it but if you master the system that we trade you can trade on your own and here's our special if you lease two months you'll get a third month for free and that's our 798 um, special so basically it's a, I, I don't know it's a 50% discount and then if you want to go for a lifetime it's four thousand dollars that's those are set I, I don't want to mislead you we're never going to increase this price and we're not increasing the monthly price but the two get a third month free it is is a special offer now let me just go in here and look at some of the questions okay thank you Keith yep the pullback is a unique option uh, I didn't really go into that but on the e-mini we take a pullback entry which gives us I, I, I really you know I didn't mention it but I want to just show this to you really quickly because this is really what's gonna this is this we have the only system that does this that's why we have a patent pending on it and our patents been pending forever and I've got to call the patent attorney and find out where the heck it is because we have been waiting forever we have the only system that does this now what we do on the e-mini is we always take an entry I'm, I'm gonna go into everything don't worry Larry we always take an entry one tick above the close for a long a one tick below the close of a candle a candle close acts as, as a weak area of support to the upside and a weak area of resistance to the downside but on the e-mini the the one tick close above is the trigger but the entry is a one tick pullback that what does that pullback do it gives you an extra tick of profit on targets one two and three and it narrows your stop from seven ticks to six it decreases your risk and it increases your profit and if you can see on the e-mini it reliably gives you a wick and it's going to pull you into almost every trade now if the system doesn't provide I mean we do get trades yesterday I had a winner that had no pullback and went a point and I just marked it as an NP no pullback no one got an entry uh, no one made any there were no commissions we just simply didn't get into the trade but it's so advantageous to get that one tick pullback to decrease the, the distance from the entry to the stop from seven to six that's like a 14 or 15 14 percent premium on a loss and it gives us a lot more money on a win okay so let me just go through these uh, as quickly as I can hold on one second here let me just go up the four contracts James um, 
you should really have if you're going to trade crude, you need about five thousand five thousand five hundred dollars um, to trade. John, we forward tested it. We know that it's going to work. And the algorithm that I showed you is so conservative and based on the kind of signals. I, because, I mean, I mean, John, his question's a little sarcastic, but, I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to take the, 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 uh, the question as, as serious. And he's saying that, you know, we want to charge us money for a system we haven't live traded. And the answer is, we don't release it unless we are absolutely sure the algorithm that we have chosen to take the entries is incredibly powerful. And I and really the point of this entire webinar was to show you how we created the algorithm, what we base the algorithm on, and what our trading methodology is. We forward tested this on market replay data for the last month. And I'm telling you, this is going to work or we would not release it. It does. Uh, I mean, that one tick pullback, Eric, is your prepaid commission. We're going to put the prices into the room. Um, take care, Alan. Uh, and um, we'll put all three links, the link for the for the um, uh, for the lifetime, the link for the monthly, and the link for the buy two get a third for free. Uh, let me just keep going down here. Okay. Not a problem, Alan. I mean, I mean, this is going to be a recording. The recording is only going to be sent to you people who have attended the webinar, and you're, and you're going to get that. Well, thank you, James. I mean, I th actually think Dean Hanley uh, knows even even a little bit more than I do about um, stock movement and uh, and um, and price action. But I, I really appreciate the compliment. The premium gym is what I just said. It's that one tick pullback. You must get a one tick pullback on the E-mini in order to get in. And that one tick of premium, it's really over 10%. Remember, you have a seven tick stop. It goes to a six. That's one seventh of your stop potential loss is then cle is cleaved off. That's greater than 10%. And when if, if your first and if you get an extra tick on your first, second, and third targets, that's greater than ten percent on your profit targets as well. Uh, you know what, David? Yes, uh, I'll tell you right now. If you lease it for a month or two, since you're the first on on the board, if you really like the system, and I know you will and you make money on it, I will allow you to apply that money towards a lifetime lease. You know, Keith, it uses a five range on the E-mini. It's going to be using an eight range on, on crude. You know what, uh, Ron? I'm, I'm, I'm running late and everyone. It's very different from an auto trader because you can't walk away from it. It gets you into the trade, but you have to adjust for slippage. And we may take a target out early. I want to optimize our profit. This is a trade entry system. It is not a turn it on and walk away system. And I want to make that clear. I'm going to be trading on a discretionary basis. The algorithmic system is going to get you into the trade. But that is how it is different from an auto. An auto, you turn on and go to work. This you cannot do. Jorge, send us an email, and we'll, we'll do it for you. Jerry, we format everything for you. You don't have to do anything. Leo, our head tech guy, it honestly is a little bit of a genius. He's standing over me here 
biting the bullet to get out of here, but he's really a bright guy. And he will format everything for you. You don't have to worry about any of that. You know what, Khalid? I don't know. Um, I really don't. He asks, which is better, to lease lifetime trading room and take your trades, you call, or lease a new electronic? I don't know. I think the electronic, the algorithmic system is going to make you money. And it's going to do it in a way in, that just factors out the human element. Um, I mean, what we found, and we've been forward tested this for a couple of years, it does factor out the um, the problem we have with that the human element. And unfortunately, pattern recognition of the human brain is a powerful thing, but it can also work against you. You can buy it monthly, uh, two months, uh, we'll, we'll get you three, or you can buy it lifetime. The recordings are going to go out the first thing in the morning. Type of account is about 5,000. Listen, I, 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 there's other questions. I, we don't back test anything, Larry. We forward test it. We do it on market replay data. Back testing is useless. Okay, well, listen, I really have to go. Everyone's running. Um, how long does the algorithm, what we're going to do, Lawrence, that's a great question. Um, I don't know what the profit factor is. I can just tell you this, Mike, 85 plus percent of the algorithmic entries reach a first target, which means that you make money on the trade. That's the only thing we want to ensure. We, we, it, there are so much data to accumulate on a year of forward testing. We don't look at how far it runs. We don't look at whether it went 17 or 18 ticks. That's all we do. We, can, we know that 85% or greater are going to hit target one. Your, your risk is over. You've got profit in the bank. And that's going to happen at least, I believe, 85% of the time. So I got to go. Um, we, we're going to send you an email. It's going to have all the purchase options on it. And we're going to send out the uh, recording tomorrow. And if you have any questions, Rory will be here in the office another hour. You're welcome to give us a call. I appreciate everyone for attending. I really, really do. And, and, and for listening, I really think our philosophy, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be good for the next 48 hours. Thank you, Noah. Uh, it's going to be good. Oh, what's, what is today? Tuesday? All day Wednesday, and we'll end it on Thursday. I don't want to – You take your time and think about it. I'm not going to give you three seconds to make the decision. Get, you, got, you got two days. Okay. All right, guys. Listen, have a great – and listen, my goal here, I so help me God, is to make you guys profitable traders. I am not here – I, I want to make money doing it, but I want you to make money in your account. That's why we're up almost a grand this week on two days of trading fund five wins. That's our goal here. I'm telling you, that's why I have developed the system and I trade it every morning. And our results are posted on the website going back two years. And those are good results. Accurate. We don't hide under a rock. We're all here. And we're not software salesmen. We're traders. And we're experts. And we, we really have created, I think, a marvelous system. And I'll just end with this. We don't have the only system that works. But we have one of the few systems that do work. The vast majority just don't. It means that 85% of the trades are going to be profitable, Har. It has an 85% positive predictive value. They are going to make you money. I can't tell you how much because that would have taken us three months to figure out. It's just too tough. All right, everyone. Great evening, and, and hopefully we'll see you in the trading room. And... Um, just give me a ring if you have uh, if you have any questions.